Welcome to the Jay and Brian Show, the fastest growing real estate finance podcast in America. Today's show is brought to you by My City Lender. Here now, Jay and Brian. Fletcher Wilcox, you're joining us today. We're so thankful, so grateful. In the house. Yep. Ah, Jay. Native Arizonan. And he gets to join us today. This is exciting. Uh, Jay and Brian, thanks for having me here today. I'm excited. Absolutely. For those of you who don't know, Fletcher Wilcox is bringing years of, of uh, Arizona residents' experience to our table today. It's very exciting. I've been reading the Wilcox Report for years now, and I'm a big fan. Yeah. So we just uh, we are very thankful to have you here today. Formerly you, Director Jerry. of Business Development at Grand Canyon Title, now with uh, Russ Lyon Sotheby's. Yeah, so yeah, welcome. And I'm welcome. loving it at Russ Lyon Sotheby's. Yeah, thank you. And you for specialize me. in luxury real estate now. Is that correct, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. Yes. All right. Scottsdale Paradise Valley. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that as well. We, we, we sure can. we got a lot of topics to talk about I know, about there's today. a lot to cover here. Job growth, population growth, water, yeah. real estate, sales, price appreciation, yep. uh, uh, rental prices for single family homes. Just uh, A lot of ground to cover. Yeah, let's go for it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's just jump in. Well, let's talk about the state of the market. I mean, it's it's a uh, it's a wild market out there right now. We're seeing we're seeing uh, inventory fluctuations. I mean, where are things right now, Fletcher? So, so inventory probably in the last thirty to forty five days has doubled here in Maricopa County doubled. or Greater Phoenix. Okay. Yeah, absolutely double. But with that said, it's still only about a two two and a half month supply, which hmm. still isn't really high yet. So but short. but it's accumulating. So we'll we'll have to see what happens. Uh, but what's really interesting, in May, we set a new record for the median purchase price of a single family home in Maricopa County. That's Five, a, unbelievable. 140000 in May, 525000 in April. Uh, it was probably five ten in March. And it just keeps right. going up and up. And now we get all this inventory. However, this month it's at 530 and it's dropped 10000 But you know what? Interesting. Hmm. You know, I can't keep going up ten or 20000 a month. So where were we one year ago? Oh, one year ago, let's see, if May we were 540, a year ago, about 440, 440,000. So 20% plus, plus percent yeah, yeah. America I, mean, uh, I mean, you can't keep going up 20 <laughs> This is incredible. <laughs> yeah. But I, yeah, I mean, we, we all sit there and we think to ourselves, this can't keep happening. But you look at all the different factors, you know, that contribute to, and population growth is something that's been coming through loud and clear in your your uh, articles. I've been the last couple of months just reading about the population growth, the population growth. That's something I didn't really, I knew it was part of it, but didn't realize how critical that was. We, how well, big well was. you know what really fuels a market is people with jobs. And when, yeah. when it comes to that's pop, it. When, that's it, right, Jay? Right. When it comes to population growth, the top three states the last two years, year over year for numeric population increase, number one is Texas, number two is Florida, and number three is Arizona. So I've got a presentation mm. I call it the Great Migration to Arizona Cities because we're, we're number three two years in a row. And actually, the last few years, Phoenix has been the number one city year over year population increase, except for we were number Phoenix was number two this year. San Antonio beat San us. San Antonio, uh, yeah, beat I, us I, out. Well, you know, they, no they kidding. Did. But but here's an even greater statistic: there's three thousand one hundred and forty three counties in the United States for the sixth consecutive year. Maricopa County gained more people than the other 3,142 counties. Wow. I'm kidding. Yeah. And, wow. and last year, Maricopa County gained more people than 44 other states. So if you that's take incredible, if you I'm take, trying to digest that right now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah. Incre but that's incredible. Maricopa County itself had more had a greater population increase in forty four other states. So that's why wow, I wow. say the Great Migration to Arizona cities. And you grew up here, right, Fletcher? Uh, you know, I was born in Yuma, Arizona. Where? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I think that's I, where I, they wow. filmed Star Wars. Yeah. I think you're yeah. right. Yeah. I think, I think <laughs> out of the lettuce field. Yeah. Yeah. They were. They were like, like out in the dunes. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, great retirement place, agriculture, marine base. But I love to ask. From many, Yuma, fr from Yuma, grew okay. up in Phoenix. Uh, but how many how many nights have you guys spent in Yuma? Is it was that a movie? I'm, I think that was I'm like gonna, a movie. I'm gonna have three to say to Yuma with zero. Russell Crowe. That's right. Zero, yeah. three, three, you, three you're you're Yuma. You from there, you send your uh, Yuma on your way to San Diego. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, enough of Yuma. Okay, yeah. all right. 
<laughs> okay, so you're from Yuma, you yeah. grew up here, and could you have ever imagined what you'd see happen with oh. property values in the Phoenix metro area? I, 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 I cannot imagine. It, mm -hmm. it has just been incredible, but there's just been such, again, the, the great migration here of people, especially mm -hmm. from California, and then a lot of people from Cook County, where Chicago's located, yeah, yeah. Michigan, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people come from Washington and Colorado here, too. You go, like, why Colorado? And people have told me because it's cold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? uh, Gotta get out of the cold. Yeah. So, jobs, climate, geopolitical reasons. Yeah. yeah oh, all, oh, all, all that, especially all California, that the yeah. geopolitical yeah. and the taxes and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So, I just yeah. was reading, speaking of California, I just noticed in your last report that the area median price in Scottsdale now has reached its peak. Correct, and that's yeah. Top, what was it, that again? It, 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 I think it was uh, one point two million. Just one point two uh, million, million dollars. Two years, uh, last year it was about a million, maybe at this time, and two years ago about eight hundred thousand. Yeah. But, but let's take Paradise Valley, okay? I saw that one. I saw so it. so Paradise Valley. <laughs> that was another one. Over and, and, and again, my numbers. I'm trying to remember a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I think the median purchase price in May was about three point yep. six and. I think last year in May it was like two point three, so an increase. Wow. Yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. one point three oh, million. Yeah, million you know. yeah. yeah. gonna buy that zip code. Yeah. yeah. Oh, geez. Well, well, and what else has been incredible? Um, the Wall Street Journal this year has been reporting like this headlines like this small town in Arizona and it's Paradise Valley, just the number of people that are coming out here to small town yeah it's small like arizona's <laughs> beverly hills right that's, uh, that's that is right this is it Jay, that is right yeah, yeah. yeah it is yeah. yeah so uh yeah you know people are coming here and uh, so again number three two years in a row population but maricopa growth. i mean much smaller numbers but going from the low 400s to the mid 500s i mean 20 25 percent increases yeah. yeah yeah is not nothing it's uh, not, uh, I, I, it is not nothing. Yeah, I, I would not have uh, predicted that high. And yeah. I mean, it feels like the kind of growth we saw in the you know oh seven oh eight oh nine kind of period. Yeah. But but there's all the, there's it's a whole different set of economic circumstances now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ba back in oh four oh five oh six, we we did uh, have tremendous population growth and price appreciation. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'm gonna take a step back. The, the population growth was really good, but but I think it's even better today. But we really overbuilt back then too. Mm -hmm. Back that in is 04, true. 04, oh, 05. Yeah. And, then, and then what happened? We had a structural imbalance because we had the big crash. You know, it, it, I saw that kind of start when they cut out the subprime. I think it was December of 206. Yeah, you had extremely loose financing. Right? Right? And then right. the alt day in like 07 yeah, everything somewhere. Everything tightened up and, late 07. And, and, and I'm going late 07. I, I had a guy that sold wholesale, you know, money to lenders. He's my office, an old friend. And he got a phone call and he said, you know what? They're going to quit alt A in like September of 207 or 08. It was. I care. It yeah, was 2007. It was, yeah. yeah, and I thought, in my mind, I thought, we're in trouble. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. Like, who's going to be able to buy anything, yeah. you know? Yeah. But yeah. And, and LTA was our, the majority of what was, you know, being sold at that point. So that's what customers got as yeah. far as loans. Yeah. yeah. So. And so you, so the previous year you, you eliminated the subprime, which I'm sure need to be eliminated. And then the LTA, and then you had all this building going on. So you had yeah. thousands of homes sitting in the market. And that's where we saw the big crash. Yeah. Mm hmm you know but yeah. it's it's different today you know we so so we had the big crash and and so take what to 10 11 12 13 14 15 we hardly had any new homes built but say 210 mm -hmm. to 218 19 maricopa county gained a half a million people you hardly mm -hmm. had any new homes built so now you got a structural imbalance right yeah now you got a big appetite yeah you got a big appetite yeah, yeah. so yeah. fletcher what's your thought on the bubble that everyone seems to be concerned about in this market yeah, you know it's hard to obviously predict i don't see that at this point um the one thing i i don't think i mentioned it yet or maybe i did uh median purchase price new record in may five hundred and forty thousand single family resale in maricopa county and, and, and again big county 540 as of june today the median purchase price is 530. So we've seen a drop okay. overall of 10,000. Now, listeners, it doesn't mean every home dropped 10,000. Some may have dropped 12, some may have went up. It just, you know, yeah. everything is location specific. Mm -hmm. So, but but you're gonna see some cities with the median purchase price drop this month compared to last month. 
a percent, two percent, three percent. Um, I think inventory is going to come up a little bit, but but we only still have about a two and a half, two month supply, which is still pretty low. And so you said inventory doubled. It, it did double. But we, so I was but, hearing about just shy of maybe 13,000 listings. Is that accurate it, right now? It, that would be accurate for if you put everything in the market, single family, townhouse, okay. condo. Okay. If I, I looked at today, uh, single family, and I, I do a lot in single family resale because that is by far the most popular product. Mm-hmm. And there and well, there's about 13,000, you're right, Jay, overall, but there was 8,800 single family homes in the market. But, but, which but, is still double. Which is still, yeah, <laughs> yes. double. Okay, but listen to this. So I, 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 I run how many single family homes in Maricopa County are in the market for 250,000 or less. And, and say I ran it six months ago, it was 60, it was 50. Now remember, there's 1.2 million homes and on any given day a few months ago, there was about 50 to 60 single family homes, 250,000 or less, which is nothing. Before I came to the studio today, I ran the number and there was 32. So while hmm. inventories doubled that lower end, that 400, 350, 250, that is still in really short supply. So don't think that that number is crashing down. It's, it's not, hmm. there are so many pent up buyers, you know, in that 250, 400,000 range mm-hmm. that I, I don't know if that those homes are going to go down in, anywhere in the near future. And again, I'm making general statements. Well, yeah, I mean, no, this and, is all people, great people, info, though. people in that price category have been just beaten up in the last year or two, yeah. just getting beat by cash offers and 30 different offers. And, and, but there's signs out there that it's changing, that it's softening a little bit. I mean, I had a, yep. a customer recently get a contingent VA offer accepted. Nice. Contingent and VA. A contingent on his home, their home being sold. Yes. Correct. And VA. So, and and VA. those are two things right there. Mid sevens, uh, 740 okay. purchase price. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, you know, just a little note too. A lot of people don't know VA. You can get a VA loan up to a million, million and yeah. a quarter. It, I mean, you guys great, are the experts. It's a great loan program. Yeah. I, I, we love it. We, we do a yeah. lot of them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And the VA, they lifted their requirements for loan limits. Loan limits. Yeah. And so there's really just, Basically, if the borrower qualifies as far as, you know, the VA is always looking at the residual income and they obviously like assets, mm-hmm. things like that. But And I think one of the yeah. things that, that people look at when they kind of go, ah, I don't know about VA, they're thinking, well, it's 0% down. Are they really qualified? And the, the reality is, and I, and I, and I need to find the, where, I, where I read this, but the, the VA borrowers are the second least likely to default, second only to 20% down conventional because of the demographic because they're they're, they're service members they're, service they're responsible members. Awesome. you know yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. so so i just they're, anybody they're out good there borrowers. yeah i say if anybody's out there and, and you're a vet i mean now's the time you have a better opportunity to get accepted with the va loan Absolutely. now than you did months ago mm-hmm. but i think sellers get nervous with va because of the appraisals and then tidewater so. you know, so yeah. so. they, they get a little sensitive about that but yeah, well, as far as the the va offer yeah i, yeah. I don't see why mm-hmm. any seller would bypass a va offer well with yeah. things opening up now now's the time to get out there but but to your point too brian can you imagine the last 12 18 months you're a buyer and you've just been beating out Shalact. every single offer. Shalact. Shalact. That's it. Shalact. 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 Perfect. Yeah. That is the perfect word. And, and how many shellacs can a buyer take? I know. You know? Uh, it but, is. It's but, like a flogging out there, you know? Beat yeah. by cash. Beat by cash. Yeah. Now I got beat by an investor with cash. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I yeah. can't help but think though, with I mean, if rates are going up and that's that's gonna cause some buyers to slow down. But with inventory coming up, I would think that that would, would pull a bunch of people back off their couch who kind of were like, nah, I'm going to I'm gonna take a step back from this and maybe get back out there and look because now they can actually take their time and look at a couple of different houses before, you know, having to th- make an offer. Yeah. With inventory doubling, now's the time to go out there because you, you just have a lot more opportunities, yeah. l- you know, a little less competition. Again, I, I still think it can be a pretty tight market, but it's a lot more opportunity than before. You, you know, a number of months ago, well, well, I, I over the last few years, I do estimated months of supply. Well, I can't remember how many months ago I started doing like Weeks. estimated yeah, days. days. No days, <laughs> of, days supply. of supply. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I went. I went from months to weeks to days. Yeah. Wow. And, and then I joke about hours. You know. Yeah. yeah. And, and and you know so so being in the real estate market, a, a lot of sellers are getting a little upset now. Okay. And that's why mm-hmm. they need to be showed data. Inventories doubled. And again, it depends where it's at. But you know, it used to be okay. 
okay, so, so Jay, I'm your agent. We're going to put your home in the market. This is what we're going to do. We're, we're, going to, we're only going to have people be able to, to view it from 10 to 2 this Saturday. And we're, you know, we're going to open it up for an open house 10 to 2. And you get 60, 80 people through, you know, and within 48 minutes, you have four offers. Well, now that's not happening. Yeah. And now sellers are like, well, what's going on? Yeah. You know? what, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, what, <laughs> yeah. what did what's you wrong? do? Are you really a good agent? You yeah. know, did you, you put a hex get... over my house. <laughs> yeah. Like, what, yeah. What happened here? Yeah. But no, we got to look at, hey, interest rates have went up, what, 6% or so or more, 30 year fixed. Yeah. And then, and then. Actually, last July, August, and September, I've got the data. The median purchase price went flat in the valley. A lot of people don't remember that. And it actually dropped in some cities. Um, but but then now it's went up 100,000 since then. Hmm. Um, uh, but so we're going to see it slowing down of purchase prices now. We're going to see some drops. And, and, I, and I do think there's much more talk this year than last year on recession. We got the yep. war in the Ukraine. We got gas prices at all time highs. Uh, really? So, yeah, really? Yeah, you haven't noticed that. Huh? Well, I see you got a shower you here. Yeah, yeah, you just I'm, live here. You guys live right. in your office. I'm about yeah. to drive. That? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah, I'm about to drive my motor home up the hill. So, oh, oh are you really? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that'll be expensive. Yeah, and, and, and so you know, I, right now, one of the things that I've been talking around the valley is a lot of buyers are just a wait and see right now. Hey, yeah. I'm just, I, I don't need to rush that. I offer. I'm just going to wait and see. But really, with inventory doubling, a lot more opportunities now and. A lot of sellers are going to be more willing to negotiate. Mm -hmm. But but I do want to say one thing. There is a timing of information. So I mentioned in May, new median purchase price, 540000 So Case Schiller is going to report in July on May data. And they're going to say, wow, Greater Phoenix, number two or number one. And yeah. may well, in the meantime, inventory's doubled or maybe it'll even triple. So sellers are just hearing in July how great the market's doing. But that data is two months old. Yeah. 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 Right. Buckle up. <laughs> Buckle up. Yeah. So we just got to look at numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Always yeah. a lag between data and, and what's happening real time in the market. So are you guys seeing anything new with lending, conventional loans at all, or anything new in that area? Yeah, just rates doing the little roller coaster. You know, yeah. they're like on the, the big dipper right now. But, you know, other <laughs> yeah. than that, yeah. uh, you know, the Fed just did their big, you know, their greatest rate hike in since 1994. Mm -hmm. It was their greatest single day, you know, single session rate hike. Mm hmm in a long, long time. So, so, so let me ask you both. We're hoping that's going to help. Going to actually help? We, we hope it's going to help not only with inflation, but, you know, as we get, you know, throughout the course of the rest of this year, that hopefully it'll kind of even things out, not only in the real estate market, but in the mortgage market. Yeah, and, and it should help with inflation. Now, when the Feds raise their rates, it's the federal funds rate. Correct. and. And that affects and, and help educate me more short term loans, car loans, right. lines of credit. It does not directly make mortgage rates go up. Cor it may it may uh, may indirectly, right? Cor I mean, indirectly, but it, it, it definitely goes right to the consumer debt. So yeah. car loans, um, um, home equity loans, HELOCs. So we're seeing a, a, a definitely an uptick in interest in home equity loans, uh, home equity, which we credit, do offer now, which we mm -hmm. do offer now. Nice. Yeah, um, we just added that this year because yeah. everybody He's got you know a nice two three percent first, and they mm -hmm. but they they've got all this equity, and they want to access it to pay off debt, to finish a remodel, to mm -hmm. maybe invest in other real estate, and and but they're looking at that two to three percent mortgage, going, I can't touch that. Yeah, I can't I touch wanna, that. Don't that, do that. that. That's a really good point. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if you want to pay off some some debt or student loans or whatever, yeah. and you're at two to three percent, why do you want to go up to six percent? Right? right. So they're looking at the the home equity lines. Of, yep. Yeah, yeah, and you're looking at you know in the in the fives maybe low sixes and and but you know your blended rate is is much better than than refinancing the whole the whole lot so it's yeah, the whole thing. it's become a, a great well interest. interestingly enough on the, with the HELOC rates a lot of the the rates that we're seeing on the HELOCs are actually a little bit lower than what you would see on a cash out conventional first mortgage yep. so that it's very interesting but yeah yeah, yeah that's yeah. good to know i've I not mean, seen that in a while yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. good long no. while. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a couple decades maybe i'm not sure yeah no hey i'm i'm always learning too you know it's just yeah. no no one person has a, a a total thumb in this marketplace as to to what's happening it's just yeah. getting together like this where we you know put our knowledge together yeah we're yeah, trying yeah. to get the information out there you know and we appreciate you sharing all this and you know you take the time to write and that was actually 
one of my questions for you today was how did you get into writing for the Arizona School of Business and Real Estate? So, so about 20 years ago, I started teaching there. Um, and actually, I, I actually taught a lender class, so I'm not a lender, but it was a lender class on title and escrow, and I would go through that. And then, you know, during the crash, and I, I think I wrote for him a little bit before the crash, but I used to put out, and I'm an ASU graduate, and I know Brian no. went to U of A, but we'll have to, <laughs> we'll have to get through that today. Uh, that's all right. But, but I, uh, uh. back when I went to ASU, which was a long time ago, I was a research assistant to a professor that ran the ASU Public Opinion and Research Center. We did all sorts of data analysis. So years ago during the crash, I started taking those skills and analyzing the market. I would write these 20 page analysis of the market that would just take me forever. And, and just I, for fun? You would just do well, it just for fun? <laughs> kind of. What is he know. doing over there? Yeah. I don't know. He's, he's on page 20. Yeah, he hasn't. You know, he's said, still in there. I said don't know a word what he's doing. Two, two days. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I started doing that and I just started getting a lot of notoriety writing in the, in the marketplace. I mean, yeah. I, you know, uh, I'd get called. So at that point, did you just share it with the school then? Oh, no. I, I would. Uh, I started just sending it out and sharing it and oh, getting the PR okay. for the company. And then I started uh, uh, getting calls to be on the radio and the TV. And Because I noticed I, get, I noticed a little TM there. I noticed your, your trademark. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I just kind of stuck that. That's a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, hey, I, I love Arizona. I love, love talking about the marketplace. And uh, But you know, we, we mentioned population growth, but job growth, because because I did kind of say, yeah, yeah. you know, you got to, if you have population growth of the jobs, you can have a pretty hot market. Well, um, early in the year. So, so let me take a step back. Back at the end of March 220 is when COVID really shut things down. From, from, um, from February 220 to the end of April, Arizona lost 327,000 jobs Holy in cow. two months. Wow. And, you know, wow. big panic. You know, of course, a lot of it was uh, the restaurant, airlines, hotels, and that, but, yep. but pretty big, pretty big panic. Let me just say this. Earlier in the year, only four states had actually gained back all the lost jobs pre-COVID and had more. Texas, Idaho, Utah, and Arizona were the, the four states. Now, now I know there's more states now, and I, I don't know who they are, but early in the year, yeah. we were only one of four states that had gained back all the jobs and more. And, that's and, incredible. And, and just looking that's at- That's encouraging. That's good news. Yeah. That's really encouraging. Well, However, I noticed down here that the one that lost was financial activities. So is, oh, is, yeah, that, yeah. is that all I, I of our, that, yeah. is that yeah. our competition? Yeah. Are, we, are we in that? I was a little yeah. concerned about that. Yeah. Professional and business. I, 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 we lost like 1,500 jobs 1500 in financial jobs services. Well, that, I was like, Jay, oh, rates no. are going up and up, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, bet, right. I bet that number yeah. that number could triple, I guess, this year. Yeah. Yeah. We won't talk about the specific <laughs> industries within that financial act. Because, you know, the refis are gone, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, we know that. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. But but if you look at at the chart, and it comes from the Arizona Department of labor through the Arizona Commerce Authority here in Arizona. But you look at your trade, transportation, utilities, 33,000 more jobs yeah. this April than last year. Uh, and your leisure and hospitality. And leisure and hospitality yeah. came all the way Th back. 32,000 right, yeah, right more, 32, yeah. more jobs. How, how many times have you, well, and, we're, and we still have a labor shortage. I, you, the other day I was oh, at a restaurant sure. on the window. It said, you know, we need help. Please, uh, please expect the delays. And uh, I was at a Starbucks. This was at uh, out in Gilbert somewhere and went to drop my kid off at the Starbucks and the lobby was completely closed. Yeah. And they just didn't. Nobody to work there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Sorry, yeah, kids. We're, we're, Starbucks is closed. Which, <laughs> which, drive through only. Which you bring me a really good point I love to talk about. Okay, so we still have a labor shortage in the United States, right? Mm -hmm. we, we, we all know that. Okay. Yeah. So if, if you're a company and you're looking for labor, especially STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, which mm -hmm. ASU has a lot and U of A, U of A does too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's a little further down. Maybe not as many as ASU, but... Uh, Is this where we so, cut the podcast? Yeah, cut, cut feed. Yeah. Cut display. We'll just splice that. Uh, I've got a nephew or that, that just got a full ride to U of A. His dad went to ASU with me. But uh, um, So if you're a company, especially looking for that STEM, the, those STEM skills, mm -hmm. and there's a shortage of labor, aren't you going to look in the states that are gaining the most people? 
Which sure. is Arizona. Definitely. Arizona yeah, is number three. Yep. And if you're looking for an employment and you hear all these companies that are that are either locate relocating their headquarters or opening up second offices in the greater Phoenix, greater Tucson area, we'll be sure to put that in. Uh, <laughs> Why not uh, look, look here? So I really think there's kind of a synergistic effect. We've got population growth and job growth, and I think those the, the whole is greater than the parts, and that's mm-hmm. really helping, uh, unfortunately, driving up home prices, too. Yeah, it has right, driven it up is, home right. prices. Yep. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Which kind of leads us into the next quandary, right? The what is happening with the water? There's there's all, all kinds of here. Let me take another, let me take another the, sip here. Okay, lakes lots are of concern up. and lakes are dry. The dam is shut. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, what, so, what's going on? Can you so tell us a little bit more? Let, let's talk a little bit about the water. I'm I. I you I just wanna, taught a course on this, right? Well, well. Let me let me let me qualify that. Okay. So so I emceed a three and a half hour water class and. My um, guest, um, one, she used to oversee the, the water department in the city of Mesa, the city of Phoenix. Now she oversees research at the ASU Kyle Center for Water Resources. So she was one of my guests. Hmm. And the other guest was her boss, who's the director of the Kyle Center for, um, AS, for, for Water Resources at ASU. Hmm. So they're the experts. I was the MC, but, but I know a tiny bit, okay? okay. <laughs> so, so last August, it was in the media all over here in the valley and the country that there was something called tier one water cuts and it affected here in arizona and what that was when lake mead water um height went below 1075 it kicked in something called tier one cuts those tier one cuts primarily affected pinnell county farmers and they knew it was coming. Okay. They knew it was coming. Okay. So, but it was all over the news, you know, water cuts, oh, yeah. this and that. Yep. But the specifics of it were it, it affected farmers in Pinell County. Now, if, if you're a farmer in Pinell County, that can be a tough, um, you're going to have to follow some of your fields and you're going to have to get your own groundwater and things like that. So, but they were also, a lot of farmers were given millions of dollars too by the government to kind of help uh, get through it, it subsidize it. Mm-hmm. So that that is serious. Uh, when when Lake Mead, I believe it goes through 1,000, 1,050 feet, it mm-hmm. will kick in some other cuts. Um, but, but here's what a, a lot of people don't know. The cities have known this for years that we could have went below 1,075, we could go below 1,050, which I'm mm-hmm. sure we're gonna, it's gonna happen, and, and it may be right there already <laughs> under that. So what they've been doing is for years, they've been water banking water underground and aquifers preparing for this. Oh, wow. So it isn't like all of a sudden Lake Mead's dry and, and the faucet's off. And, and again, don't get me wrong, the Lake Mead situation is very serious, but a lot of cities have been water banking for years okay. in this situation. Interesting, so, okay. So okay. so um, they, they've been water banking, and then 10 cities in the Valley of the Sun also get SRP water, which is like another water source. And I, I'm going to try to remember the cities, but it's like uh, Glendale, Tolleson, Avondale, Peoria, Scottsdale, Phoenix, Mesa, Chandler, Gilbert, and I may have forgotten one, but they also have an additional source of water. Um, then within um, Yavapa, there's something called AMA's Active Management Areas. Uh, they're only in Yavapai, Maricopa, Pinnell, and Pima, which obviously Tucson, Casa Grande, Phoenix, area cities, Prescott area. These active management areas, home builders cannot build homes unless they can prove a 100-year assured reliable water supply. So oh, steps wow. and, and that mm-hmm. ground, and that was through a Groundwater Management Act in 1980. Mm-hmm. So, so we've been working on that. Now, uh, Governor Ducey was just in Israel meeting with the Israelis about desalinization plants because I almost can guarantee you um, someday we're going to be working down with Mexico and we're going to be de- 
have desalinization plants down there. Gotcha. So the, I believe the Arizona legislature disapproved a $1 billion budget with part of it going towards that and okay. looking at other water resources. So, Good to know. So I don't want to take away we don't have a serious problem, right. but uh, a lot of cities and f- even farmers have known these things could happen. Now, now, now let me tell you a specific area that, that's having some problems. Oh, go ahead if you haven't got a question. No, 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 okay. no, no. So the Rio Verde, Rio Verde Foothills area, I get asked about that, and I'm no expert on it. Um, there are some areas up there that have pretty much dry wells, and there's other areas maybe right around the street that have all the water they need. Um, but the ones that have the, the wells that aren't working so well, they've been getting water shipped from Scottsdale, filling up their tanks, okay? Well, Scottsdale told those that were getting water shipped to them that by the end of 2022, Scottsdale would no longer ship them water. And they're going to have to find those that don't have good wells are going to have to get an alternative water source. Mm-hmm. And their bottom line is they're going to have to pay more money for their water. Now, why did Scottsdale say uh, by the end of 2022, we're not going to ship water anymore? Because when the tier one cuts hit, even though Scottsdale wasn't directly affected, that's in their own plan. Water contingency plan is okay. that if mead goes below 1075 we're going to put our own things in place and so that's why that so makes sense. so a lot of cities have been working on this for a long time it's good to know good info great yeah. information that's about all i know on it. So <laughs> don't ask you i don't know if i can answer anything else yeah no that's great I, I, yeah. I, I, you may not even know the answer to this but what what tier do we have to get to when they say you can't water your grass anymore well <clears throat> You, you know, there's like a tier two, a tier two B, a tier three, and, I, and I'm not an expert on them. I do think you're going to see um, a push to more desert landscaping mm-hmm. and less green grass. I mean, again, we're not really in trouble, but it's kind of that that it, when you water your lawn, it's hard for that water to to make its way down into yeah. to an aquifer. It just mm-hmm. waters the grass and evaporates. So. Yeah, you're gonna see you're gonna see a push towards more, um, which which I have a green grass. <laughs> yeah. you, know, yeah. you do. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. But I've been thinking I do, about I do it. Too. I've been, I've been thinking about, about it. it. Yeah. 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 Not we, much, we've been trying to that's minimize enough. it. We don't have yeah. a perfectly green, plush, yeah, big grass backyard. We it's lightly watered. I would say. This yeah. <laughs> I have some des- I have desert landscaping yeah. too. But I, you know, I've actually talked to people. Where where they've said so and so left Arizona because of the water situation. I heard that, and, oh, and heard I'm, I'm yeah. hearing really? more and more yeah. concern about that. Yeah. People moving here and or even thinking about leaving here because they're like, yeah, I just I don't think did we're they go enough to, water. Did they go to Las Vegas? Maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I don't <laughs> well, know. they got could issues too. But, uh, <laughs> could have been. Uh, I, but but I but I, I knew about with the builders that the builders did have to prove that we would have a hundred year yeah, supply of water yeah. in order for yeah. the builder to be able to build a new community. Right. So I knew that that well, was part within of within those active management areas. Now yeah. now now here's here's an issue though is outside of the active management areas, an agriculture company can come in and dig deep wells and and maybe take the neighbor's water away. There is no. Hmm. Act, there is no management over okay. that. So, so the bottom line is there is room for growth in Arizona, but in certain areas. You can't just build everywhere, but if you build within most of the cities, mm-hmm. um, you're you're probably going to be okay. You should yeah. be okay at this point. You know, so that's good. Yeah, yeah. Well, and 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 we need um, you know that assured water supply because. What, what companies would come here if you can't guarantee, mm-hmm. you know, that you're going to have water? Right. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a big part of our economic development is is having that water resource managed for, for the future. And I think most of the cities overall, and I know there's a coalition, I can't remember the name of it, of uh, like 10 cities. And, and they're they're very much in the forefront here. Um, and I think we're in the forefront of the, the country because we've we're been in a desert so long. I know. I mean, they, thankfully, <laughs> I mean, they had that infrastructure in place, you know. It's yeah. been a long time in the in the making. And, yeah. yeah. And and I'll never forget uh, forget June 26, 1990 was when it hit 122 and hit the new record. That and, was. Uh, I remember, yeah. yeah that, yeah. I was just reading an article about that, actually. Oh, did you? Yeah. 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 It's like, oh my gosh. Yeah. I think we've seen some pretty hot ones. Since oh, we, yeah. We've been oh, here yeah. about 20 years. Yeah. I mean, we've seen now. some hot Where'd ones. Where'd you guys come from? Cleveland, Ohio. Mm. 
Yeah. It's where my mom was born. Oh, it, seriously? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's a good place to be from. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she came good. out from you. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a great. I've been there once. Yeah, she came out here in the 40s. How about you, Brian? Los Angeles, California. Thousand yeah. Oaks. Just That's where my there. dad's from. Okay. So, so, I, have to ask yeah. you, so I have to ask yeah, you. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing my my research on who is Fletcher Wilcox before having him on our show. And I happened to spot that you posted. It was back in February. Uh, the Kirk Gibson home run. It was the, on, oh, the, on this I date did. in 1988. I, I, my parents were at that game, and and it's I'm a huge Dodger fan, so I, I just I wanted I was curious. Are you actually a Dodger fan? Or are you? I was a Dodger okay. fan. Oh I, no, I, I was a Dodger. Oh, no, fan. yeah, yeah. I, the, the Diamondbacks have taken over, okay. but yeah, I used to love Vince Scully. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. Fernando Valenzuela, and just yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, Steve Garvey, and just the whole. I used to collect baseball cards, so yeah. I, oh, I, yeah. I, 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 I love I love the. Well, I grew up going that, to games in that era when yeah. it was Garvey and Sachs and yeah. Monse and all those guys. Oh, that and I, I I was at a really good friend's house who I still see to this day. I went to grade school with, and we were watching that when Kurt Gibson hit that home run. Yeah. That, and he had that so, hamstring too. Oh, he was a injured. Yeah. yeah, he was kind of limping along. Yeah, it was a grand slam, right? Yeah, yeah, two run home run, two run home run. That's right. Yeah, yeah. What what I. Yeah. Didn't last long as our Diamondback coach show. So. No, no. Yeah. I don't great, know what happened. Great player. You know, yeah. great players don't always translate into great, yeah. great coaches. Yeah. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know what else has went up too tremendously is the the monthly rental price of a single family home. Yes, yeah, so I wanted that, to ask you about that. That was a new record. Uh, I think I got it here somewhere. You know, sometimes I just forget the numbers. You know, I just new yeah, record. Well, you've got a lot of numbers. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a lot. In uh, the last month in May, new record median monthly rental price single family in Maricopa County two thousand three hundred sixty dollars. Yeah. My wow. parents, my parents moved out here from Thousand Oaks, where we all grew mm -hmm. up, about four and a half years ago, and uh, they've been paying twenty five hundred a month for smallish kind of house yeah. in, in McCormick Ranch. Yep. And uh, oh, that's where they, I live. They, but that's okay. Oh, awesome. yeah. You guys just keep hitting here. You're where you're from. <laughs> Jeez. Where I live. Oh, gosh. <laughs> that was, nailing it. It was funny. Yeah. Well, yeah. when we went to go see the house that they were moving into, I instantly knew why they had picked that house. They had popcorn ceilings. They had railroad ties out in the front yard. Oh, but, no kidding. And you know, it's, it's you know, it's a very mature community with big trees and everything I'm like yeah no wonder you guys like it you're so <laughs> looks just like thousand oaks a okay. actually i call it i did a video a couple years ago in scottsdale from the the desert up in pinnacle peak and i called it the the green belt that whole haze yeah. Area. oh yeah like, a lot of people love it because the now again they, they have replaced some of the green with mm -hmm. with desert but they're still green there and people when they when they come over my house or they drive by they're like there's grass out here. It's yeah. green. It reminds me of Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, you know? yeah. that, that, that was only the, it's sunny out. Yeah, right. It's, yeah, the green belt was my dad's number one criteria. He's a jogger his whole life. He's 79. And okay. when it's not a bazillion degrees, he gets out there and he still, yeah. still he says, he's not moving very fast. Sorry, dad, if you're listening. <laughs> yeah. He's still out there. God bless. Well, there and, and there's all those running trails, bike trails. Yeah, yeah. It's a neat area. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. No, and, so how long have you been there? Oh, 25 years oh, okay. yeah yeah That's good. yeah so somebody said you've moved up from yuma to me one time so uh, <laughs> i love yuma so i'm not making fun if you're from yuma i love yuma so <laughs> just so many people don't know about yuma yeah, they're like yeah. yuma, you, yuma what is that what well is and, that? and actually the reason is that the california side or the arizona the, there side? is yeah there is I, I was the reason i was born there was that the cincinnati reds had a minor league baseball team and my dad played on it so, oh kidding. wow yeah, it, was no called, kidding. it was called the yuma sun Sox in the arizona mexico league yeah so awesome. so that's why I ended up in Yuma. Yeah. Mm, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Just learning all kinds of stuff today. <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool. And so you, you, McCormick Ranch now. So how long have you lived there? Yeah. No, about 25 years oh, okay. or so. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, so uh, we we're talking about the rent real quick. So mm -hmm. I was going to mention that uh, my parents rent. They recently let them know it's going up from 2,500 a month to 3,500 a month. Oh, the, the, the exact same house. Same house. Yeah. A thousand dollars. Yeah. I mean, and they hadn't touched it in four and a half years. Four years, but uh, yeah, they just wow. That, that's a pretty big it. jump. I yeah. I know people that do have rentals, mm -hmm. and they have been holding back and raising rates, and and mm -hmm. a lot of them have yeah. them under market, and some of them are saying, "Yeah, I just have to, I just have to raise them now," and yeah. uh, and and they're going and doing some remodeling. But yeah, so so the demand to not only own, the demand to rent a single family home has been tremendous here. Yeah, it's crazy. It really has. Yeah, it really is. Again, it's all that. 
population growth, people people coming over here. It's um, you think I, it's going to continue like this? I I think next. Uh, so the U.S. Census Bureau, where I get my data from, they come out with state population data year over year. They come out in December, so they'll come out this December again. My prediction is we will be number three again behind Texas and Florida. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just. It's amazing. Just, just that that pattern is just going on. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, people are hearing, yeah, hey, there's a water issue. So that that's going to hold a few back. But I think we'll be number three again. North Carolina will be a close uh, behind us. But mm-hmm. we're, we're running pretty close with them. But um, yeah, I think we'll be three again. Yeah. Interesting. And I think Maricopa County for the well, – they'll come out with uh, county data uh, March, April of next year, and I think it'll be the seventh year in a row Maricopa County. And mm-hmm. and what's interesting is I believe, and I haven't seen anything lately, but that Maricopa mm-hmm. County of all counties is the number one retirement destination. Mm-hmm. Oh, now, yeah. But, but yeah. I need to qualify that, okay? Because when you take the top 25 counties where people retire, I believe Maricopa County be number one. But 12 of the top 25 are in Florida. So yeah. when you oh, put yeah, it all yeah. together, yeah, they kill us. But, yeah. but you take one place, yeah. it's, it's here. Yeah. 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 Good to know. Yeah. And yeah. we're hearing more and more. Uh, my mother-in-law just moved into, we just moved her up here from Tucson um, into a retirement community. And we're hearing, uh, I, I'm meeting all of her friends and I'm loving that whole format and definitely see myself there one day. But um, fewer fewer of them are leaving. They're like, they're coming here and they're staying. I mm-hmm. guess fewer of them are s- snowbirding. They're, um, they're, they're sticking around. Yeah. So that's. And, and not leaving during the, right. the summer. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's my, interesting. It, mm-hmm. Must be the pickleball craze. It's got to be. It's <laughs> yeah, got to be. It's got to be. It's huge. And I played my first pickleball game uh, about three weeks ago. And yeah. what'd you think? I, you know, you have a, I had no idea what it was. Is that what happened? Uh, yeah, right. I got the <laughs> pickleball that's, injury. Uh, that's shoulder surgery. Yeah. Ouch. Gosh, you got to watch was, that. This pickleball. was an ouch. Yeah, I'll have to tell you about this one. But uh, it was actually a lot of fun. You played with, uh, I didn't know it was a wiffle ball till I played. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and uh, so, so there was, four of us, two against two, and I'd never played before. And I've been been in a lot of sports and that, and I played baseball. And uh, just that first game, my timing was off. I hit the ball out of bounds. And it's I'd like, so it. from what I've heard, it's like giant ping pong, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> kind like, of a giant ping pong. And it was tough at first, and me and my partner, we got beat. But then I got the hang of it, and the next two games, we smoked them. So. All right, there <laughs> yeah, you go. Yeah. Yeah, so it was actually it was a lot of fun. I'm going to play it more in the future. Yeah, so what cool. what happened? Your your arm is wrapped up here. And so so this is a long story. Well, maybe it's we a short ask? story. It yeah, okay? it, it, it's kind of embarrassing. Um, so actually, back in the late seventies, I actually had a, a very short amateur boxing career, and uh, mm-hmm. the stories did, just did, keep did, coming. Awesome. I, feel, I feel peppered with <laughs> stories at this moment. Some, had some boxing wow. matches, but I have continued since then, not getting in the ring, obviously. Yeah. Um, uh, but I, I work out on uh, heavy bags, speed bags, and I had a couple guys over, and I was showing them how to do this Mike Tyson oh, right boy. hook. And I did it as hard as I could, but I did something I never did. I hit it with an open palm, and it, oh. it went up and severed wow. severed my major tendon in my shoulder, completely snapped it in half. No kidding. And, I, you know, I was showing off. <laughs> you were showing off? And yeah. that, oh, so my don't, You know, I'm going to grow what, off what one of these you, days. What made you? Uh, it, it just... <laughs> It was just one of those uh, things. Getting old, one of those <laughs> I, I getting old moments. Could, wish, yeah. Oh, there you go. Get, I wish I could take wow. it back. And, uh, man, oh, man. So, yeah, and, and how and long if, ago was that? Uh, that was a few months ago, but I just had surgery three weeks ago. I'm in this yeah. thing for, for six weeks. And, uh, to, you know, try putting on a, uh, a sock with one hand. No. Is that like <laughs> excruciating pain? <laughs> oh, excruciating. Oh, Absolutely yeah. excruciating. Yeah. So, oh, uh, gosh. don't hit a heavy bag and show off in front of your friends. <laughs> yeah. have to duly noted. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Note that one for sure. Get that, write that down. Yeah. Yeah. Man, oh man. So does, does, is that going to inhibit any summer plans for you or? Uh, they said it would be, well, you probably, yeah, yeah, it is. Cause I'm in physical therapy. So for the mm. lot of the summer. So you'll be here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll leave maybe end of August, September, but yeah. 
yeah, I'm going to be here for a while. Well, yeah. Fletcher, great to have you with us today. Yeah. Hey, Brian Love and Jay, well, I, I haven't seen you guys in a long time. Thank it's you just, very uh, well. just a pleasure to, uh, to be here with you guys yeah, in the, on your show. Great. And maybe we'll we'll have you back uh, after the December data comes in and yeah. see where we're yeah. at. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love yeah. to have you back. Great see, yeah, so I'm predicting number three again. Let's find out if I'm right or wrong. All right. I, yeah. Let's do that. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. Fletcher, thanks, again. Thanks, thanks, Fletcher. thanks again for coming. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Brian. You're welcome. Yeah.